Elementary Course in Synthetic Projective Geometry by Derek Norman Lamer. Chapter 1 Continued One to One Correspondence. Section 16 Plane System and Point System. Section 17 Planes in Space. Section 18 Points in Space. Section 19 Space System. Section 20 Lines in Space. Section 21 Correspondence between Points and Numbers. Section 22 Elements at Infinity. Section 16 Plane System and Point System. The plane, considered as made up of points and lines in it, is called a plane system and is a fundamental form of the second order. The point, considered as made up of all the lines and planes passing through it, is called a point system and it is also a fundamental form of the second order. Section 17. If now we take three lines in space, all lying in different planes, and select L points on the first, M points on the second, and N points on the third, then the total number of planes passing through one of the selected points on each line will be LMN. It is reasonable, therefore, to symbolize the totality of planes that are determined by the infinite points on each of these three lines by infinity cubed, and to call it an infinitude of the third order. But it is easily seen that every plane in space is included in this totality, so that the totality of planes in space is an infinitude of the third order. Section 18. Consider now the planes perpendicular to these three lines. Every set of three planes so drawn will determine a point in space, and conversely, through every point in space may be drawn one and only one set of three planes at right angles to the three given lines. It follows, therefore, that the totality of points in space is an infinitude of the third order. Section 19. Space System Space of three dimensions, considered as made up of all of its planes and points, is then a fundamental form of the third order, which we shall call a space system. Section 20. Lines in space. If we join the two-fold infinity of points in one plane with the two-fold infinity of points in another plane, we get a totality of lines of space which is of the fourth order of infinity. The totality of lines in space gives, then, a fundamental form of the fourth order. Section 21. Correspondence between points and numbers. In the theory of analytic geometry, a one-to-one -one correspondence is assumed to exist between points on a line and numbers. In order to justify this assumption, a very extended definition of number must be made use of. A one-to-one -one correspondence is then set up between points in the plane and pairs of numbers, and also between points in space and sets of three numbers. A single constant will serve to define the position of a point on a line, two, a point in the plane, three, a point in space, etc. In the same theory, a one-to-one -one correspondence is set up between loci in the plane and equations in two variables between surfaces in space and equations in three variables, etc. The equation of a line in a plane involves two constants, either of which may take an infinite number of values. From this, it follows that there is an infinity of lines in the plane, which is of the second order, if the infinity of points on a line is assumed to be of the first. In the same way, a circle is determined by three conditions a sphere by four, etc. We might then expect to be able to set up a one-to-one -one correspondence between circles in a plane and points, or planes in space, or between spheres and lines in space. Such indeed is the case, and it is often possible to infer theorems concerning spheres from theorems concerning lines, and vice versa. It is possibilities such as these that gives to the theory of one-to-one -one correspondence its great importance for the mathematician. It must not be forgotten, however, that we are considering only continuous correspondences. It is perfectly possible to set up a one-to-one -one correspondence between the points of a line and the points of a plane, or, indeed, between the points of a line and the points of a space of any finite number of dimensions. 
if the correspondence is not restricted to be continuous. Section 22. Elements at Infinity. A final word is necessary in order to explain a phrase which is in constant use in the study of projective geometry. We have spoken of the point at infinity on a straight line, a fictitious point only used to bridge over the exceptional case when we are setting up a one-to-one -one correspondence between the points of a line and the lines through a point. We speak of it as a point and not as points because in the geometry studied by Euclid we assume only one line through a point parallel to a given line. In the same sense, we speak of all the points at infinity in a plane as lying on a line, the line at infinity, because the straight line is the simplest locus we can imagine, which has only one point in common with any line in the plane. Likewise, we speak of the plane at infinity because that seems the most convenient way of imagining the points at infinity in space. It must not be inferred that these conceptions have any essential connection with physical facts or that other means of picturing to ourselves the infinitely distant configurations are not possible. In other branches of mathematics, notably in the theory of functions of a complex variable, quite different assumptions are made and quite different conceptions of the elements at infinity are used. As we can know nothing experimentally about such things, we are at liberty to make any assumptions we please so long as they are consistent and serve some useful purpose. An Elementary Course in Synthetic Projective Geometry This book was written by Derek Norman Lamer, Assistant Professor of Mathematics, University of California. It was published by Gin and Company, Boston, 1917, and is now in the public domain. The text is available for free download at Project Gutenberg, read by Jim Renholt. Programming and illustrations by Jim Renholt, 2020. Corrections and comments are appreciated. Thank you for listening.